Howdy gamers and welcome back to another episode of Together We Design, the video series all about graphic design created by designers for designers. I'm your host Anarchy and on today's episode we're going to be talking about typography. We're going to be talking about what typography is, uh, we're going to look at different kinds of fonts, how to pick and pair fonts, as well as some other related terms and resources that will help you in your understanding of type. <music> So what is typography? Typography in general is the art and technique of arranging type to make written language legible, readable, and appealing when displayed. Put simply, it's the style and the way text looks and it can also refer to the art of working with text. Typography is something you see literally everywhere. Typography is on the website you're looking at right now. Typography could also be on the shirt that you're wearing, for example mine. It could also be on the cover for food that you've eaten. For example, my cheese of grooves. When I say that typography is literally everywhere, it literally is everywhere. And once we get done with this video, you won't be able to unnotice any kinds of fonts you see anywhere. The first kind of font we're going to be looking at is called a serif font. Serif fonts are those real old timey and royal looking kind of fonts that you might associate with things that are very formal. So these are the kind of fonts you might see on wedding invitations or associated with big formal businesses. They are called serif fonts because they have little strokes on the edges of the letters that are called, you guessed it, serifs. Serifs are what make the font look very traditional and very rarely do you see these in esports. Whether you use serif fonts in esports or not quite honestly depends on the branding you're going for. One Overwatch team that thrived very well with the use of serif fonts was Odyssey. Odyssey, uh, who I worked for for a little bit, their brand was based around uh, the Odyssey, like the book written by uh, the ancient Greek poet uh, Homer. And the branding was based, like, it was supposed to be very traditional, very old-timey, very uh, old-looking due to the nature of what it was based around. So serif fonts looked really good with the branding that we were going for. If we were to use, like, sans serif stuff, it wouldn't really match very well. Uh, the next font we're gonna be font type we're going to be looking at is something we're all very used to seeing, and, and these are the fonts that you're really going to see everywhere. Uh, they're what you get when you remove the serifs from a serif font, which is why they're called sans serif or without serifs. These fonts forgo the serifs in the font, and it gives them a very much more modern, clean, and less formal feel. Uh, these are the fonts that you, like I said, will see literally everywhere. These are the fonts that websites like YouTube use. They're all sans serif, and the fonts on my shirt are also sans serif, and the ones on my boxes of cheese Cruz back there are also sans serif. Esports is filled with sans serif fonts because esports is a new and modern scene. Unless you're specifically going for that kind of branding like we talked about earlier, uh, you're going to use sans serif fonts. Everything you're going to want to make sure that it looks clean and it's going to look modern, so you use sans serif fonts. Those are the two main kind of fonts, but there are smaller categories of fonts. The first of which we're going to talk about is uh, handwriting fonts. These are fonts that look naturally done, or put easily, they look like a person wrote the font. Uh, you would use these if you wanted to do something that feels a little more natural and not super formal, like if you were to use a serif font. Uh, the formal version of handwriting fonts would be script fonts, which are like handwritten ones, but they're a lot more formal, and you get the picture. A uh, second subcategory of font that we're going to talk about are display fonts, which are the fonts that encapsulate basically just about everything else that doesn't fit into the earlier categories we talked about. Oftentimes, these fonts are suited really for only big text sizes or look really good in small amounts. These would be your grunge fonts, or your really spe like real specialty fonts like the Harry Potter fonts or like the fonts that are based around something like a font that looks like a, a comic book font. Um, these would be what you use to like head a design or emphasize something that's like special in your design. So when it comes to picking fonts, you definitely want to think about what it is the style that you're going for as, a, as well as the message that you're trying to convey. You quite obviously don't want to use Comic Sans in a series esports graphic for a couple of reasons. One of them being that Comic Sans has a terrible reputation for being a meme font. So when people see a graphic that you mean to be serious and you use Comic Sans in it, they're quite obviously not going to see it as so, they're not going to take it very serious at all. Another reason, of course, would be that it just doesn't fit the feel of what you're going for. If it's a meme and you're going for it, I would say go ahead. Now, I've definitely done it before, but if you're going for something modern, then pick a font that gives you modern vibes. Don't pick something that obviously will look stupid in the context of the rest of the design. Now, pairing fonts is a completely different matter at hand. Oftentimes, when you're working with a project, just one font isn't going to cut it. You may want to use a font for a heading and then use a different font for the body. Uh, for headers, you may want a display font for the name of the person, whoever's header it is, and then a sans serif font for the subtext or accent text. Uh, with these, do not be afraid to pair different types of font. 
uh, in cases in the cases like these, opposites attract. Really, some examples could be a serif and script font to get a real formal feel for something. Uh, another example could be a display font and sans serif font, like I mentioned earlier. And this combination of fonts are used especially in esports. Uh, one website that I found that will give you more traditional use is uh, fontpair.co, uh, which you can choose a category of pairings that you want to look at, and it will give you fonts uh, that look good together in these combinations. Uh, now we're going to talk about some related terms that will help you in your understanding of typography. The first of which is the weight of a font. Font weight refers to the thinness or thickness of a font. Most fonts that you find that are serif and sans serif will have different weights. Examples of these would be thin, standard, medium, bold, thick, black, etc. And this leads us into our next topic, which is hierarchy. Hierarchy is essentially having the most important text or the text you want to be seen first as the most visible in your work. Anything that's not important is under that or not in the same space. It's important to have good hierarchy, so a person viewing a graphic gets where they're supposed to get out of it. Uh, usually the most important text is bigger or uses a heavier weight than that of the subtext. A good rule of thumb is to go at least two font weights under so there's a big enough difference in between the text. The next term is leading or line spacing, which is rather self-explanatory and it's a space between lines of text. You want to have good line spacing so that way the hierarchy of the text flows good and it's comfortable and easy to read. Our graphic might look off if the text is too close together or it's too far apart from each other and it may be off-putting to look at. Anyway, related to that is kerning, which is the space between specific characters or letters in type. Most, of, most fonts that are done well uh, will have good kerning, however there's some fonts that you may find on places like Defont or 1001 fonts that uh, might not have the greatest kerning and this is especially true for display fonts where a lot of times you will manually have to fix the kerning because it can be off between certain characters in the font. Uh, one game that's actually really helpful with training yourself to see kerning naturally is called Kern Type, in which it gives you 10 words and you have to manually fix the kerning between the letters and it's both fun and it helps train yourself to get better to see issues and mistakes in kerning so I definitely recommend playing it if you're a designer and you're looking to learn. Tracking is very similar to kerning but it refers to the overall spacing between characters which you can use to space letters out or shrink them together. Often this is done for artistic effect and or to your liking. Now that you know these and have a deeper understanding of how type works, the next time you go to make a graphic or look at other people's graphics, you see all these things that you never noticed before and it's rather crazy in it. That's going to wrap up today's video. I hope you learned something new because I definitely did. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe as well as also clicking that bell icon so you can catch some more fun and exciting Triumph content. This has been Anarchy. Thank you and goodbye. Woo.